When a small town depends on a big industry, no one wants to kill the golden goose. But as concerns grow about the link between fracking and earthquakes, uncomfortable questions are hard to avoid. Barr Stewart starts our story in northern Alberta. It was the evening of January 22nd in Fox Creek, Alberta. Most in this community of 2,500 were already off to bed for the night, but May Michelow had just arrived at work. It was just um, getting settled in, and the earth moved quite strongly, actually. I was quite surprised. And she wasn't the only one. Another fellow came downstairs and said, did you feel the earth move? And I said, yes, I did. Did you? Yes. What they felt was a 4.4 magnitude earthquake. It happened 30 kilometers outside of Fox Creek. Michelow knew what it was because she experienced an earthquake before when she lived on Vancouver Island. It felt familiar and yet strange for this area. Uh, not totally unexpected given the circumstances. By that she means because Fox Creek is a growing hub for hydraulic fracturing or fracking. This part of the province sits on what's known as the Duvernay Shale, an area rich with oil and gas trapped deep below the ground. Crews drill into the earth and pump a highly pressurized mixture of sand, water and other additives to fracture the rock and release the deposits. Fracking is a big business here. It drives this community. But scientists also believe it's what likely caused the 4.4 magnitude earthquake. If confirmed, it would be one of the largest ever caused by a fracking operation. While the earthquake made headlines, it was just one of several that had been recorded in the Fox Creek area over recent months. Fox Creek, just right here, about 30 kilometers to the west, we've noticed these new earthquakes that have been happening. Ryan Schultz is a seismologist with Alberta's Geological Survey. He's been studying the Fox Creek earthquakes through data streamed in real time from seismic sensors. Basically, we're seeing more earthquakes in that region than we have previously. We're trying to put together a plausible story geologically um, to link these two things together. So essentially to get an idea of how human activities can induce earthquakes. That's not only being examined in Alberta, but also in northeastern BC, another hub for fracking that has experienced its own cluster of quakes. That's the pressure that you are putting there, so that's a lot. The issue came up at a recent conference on fracking organized by First Nations in the area. Now, depending on who you talk to, you talk to the proponents and you talk to the province, they tend to shy away from acknowledging that fracking is causing these earthquakes. Talk of the connection between fracking and earthquakes might still be contentious, but from a scientific standpoint, the link has become clearer. A recent report from BC's Oil and Gas Commission showed that between August 2013 and October 2014, Natural Resources Canada recorded 231 seismic events related to oil and gas activities. This must be an, an a activity that they are doing right now in the region. Han Kao has been studying induced seismicity for three years at the Pacific Geoscience Centre on Vancouver Island. We have made tremendous progress in this. We now know much more than we did several years ago. As an expert in seismology, Kao frequently speaks to the media, but on this topic, the protocol seemed a little different. Our interview couldn't begin until another camera arrived because we were told it was being taped for the deputy minister. A good indication of just how politically sensitive this issue is. You don't want to take the public safety solely and totally ignore the economic benefit. But on the other hand, it's certainly wrong if you want to take the economic benefit totally as your top priority and ignore the public safety. And is the science there yet in order to, 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 to make that decision? <laughs> I like to say yes, but I, the true answer perhaps is not yet. Cow says they do know that liquids injected at large volumes can activate faults in the earth, but that's not the only factor. He says there needs to be more research on what impact timing and other geological conditions can have. The key issue is how big is the induced earthquake and when 
is the biggest, the biggest uh, induced earthquakes to, uh, to happen. I think that's the remaining question. So all the micro seismic events are very contained. Once a frack is underway, it's monitored by companies from inside control rooms like this one. We're running it at 300 kilograms per cubic meter. The operation is watched around the clock to see just what kind of impact all that pressure is having below the ground. We're just wanting to see if everything is going according to our plan. We plan these things out very carefully in advance. We do a lot of calculations um, to determine exactly the pressures and concentrations of fluid that get pumped. And we have an expectation of what that's going to look like. And so the microseismic lets us confirm you know, that, that it's actually reacting as we expect it to. But despite the site surveys and the planning, it's not always possible to identify every fault ahead of time. After the 4.4 earthquake, Alberta's energy regulator ordered companies to step up monitoring in the Fox Creek area to include all seismic activity within five kilometers of their wells. Anytime there's an earthquake above 2.0, it has to be reported. Anytime there's one above 4.0, the operation must stop. A similar rule is also in place in British Columbia. But it all gets down to say that, you know, here's all the science and we're getting it right almost all the time. Michael Binion runs Quest Hair Energy. He says there is a lot of concern about the issue in industry, but there's also been a lot of focus on preventing earthquakes. We're not doing that bad. Uh, we've got a very small number of issues and a very large um, a pool of, of operations, and none of those operations have caused any damage or represented any health or safety risk. But back in Fox Creek, May Michelow worries about the future. What happens if there's another, stronger earthquake? I think people do have concerns that they're too afraid to talk about. Some people have actually said, well, I would, I would speak out, but I'm afraid my husband will lose his job or I will lose my job. In an area so dependent on oil and gas, she isn't suggesting they stop fracking completely, but she does wish industry would slow down until the community can be assured that the business fueling the town isn't also putting it at risk. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Fox Creek, Alberta.